One design sold 315 times in just 90 days. And I am gonna show you what design that is. But first, I want you to rate your design strategy. You're going to rate it one to five stars. You're going to rate yourself one star if you go onto Etsy, find yourself a bestseller listing like this bride and groom listing, and then create another listing that looks a lot like this one. You're going to give yourself two stars if you find that bestseller, the bride and groom, then you head over to a site like Creative Fabrica and you find graphics that go along with your theme randomly and make listings like this one. You're going to give yourself three stars if you're thinking you need to cross niche. So you randomly select a niche like dinosaurs and now you create your own listing that says bride and groom but you might use something like a dinosaur font. You're going to give yourself four stars if you're thinking you do need to sub niche down or cross niche but you're thinking you also need to be a bit more intentional about it. So maybe you do a little research in that cross niche along with your bride and groom niche and now maybe you put three to ten designs out. And I'm going to suggest you give yourself five stars. If you do lots of market research, you're researching the cross niche that you're thinking of going into or the sub niche when you're niching down, getting more specific. You are intentional with that research. You are looking at what is selling well in designs in that sub niche. You are also looking at what is selling well in the bride and groom niche. And then you're going to go out and put 20 to 30 designs out there. You're making an effort to stand out in ways that are backed by research and you're giving it a decent try with enough listings. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how I shoot for five stars every time I sit down a design as I just defined it. We are going to be designing in the bride and groom niche, so we are going to be creating a couple's listing with two designs that are going to go into our one listing. We are going to be focused on the designs, but I am quickly going to show you how I validated the market and why I think it's worth my time to hit the bride and groom sweatshirt niche. We're going to briefly discuss checking USPTO before you hit the designing process, especially if you're going to be working in this niche. And then I'm going to show you several different ways I generated ideas and you can use these ways of generating ideas in any niche that you're working in. And then we'll get busy designing and I will show you 20 different directions that I came up with that we could go in. And if I sat for longer to continue working on this, I could have come up with 20 more easy breezy. If you do feel like all of the ideas have already been thought of and you are struggling to add something different to the market, which you must figure out how to do if you want to make real money, with print on demand and Etsy. Then you're sitting in the right video because you are going to feel more equipped to do just that by the end. First, let's validate the market. Why did I choose to go into this niche to begin with? In this video up here, and I will also link it down in the description if you want a full deep dive into this topic, I went into different sweatshirt niches based on research that was showing that there was a little more space. There was high search volumes and lower competition from the amount of Etsy sellers in these spaces. And I happened to come across the bride and groom sweatshirt niche. I went onto E-Rank, I used their keyword tool, I put my product in, sweatshirt, I validated that there's a lot of searches, that's the top bar there, it's green, but there's also a lot of Etsy competition, which is the bottom bar there, that's red. Then I went down into the related searches and I was looking for that first column to be green and I was looking for the last column to be green also. Red, it means there's a lot of competition, so I was looking for kind of more space in the market. I found a little bit of space in bride with yellow competition but green searches and then that led me to finding bride and groom sweatshirts in the next related set of searches. We've got yellow searches, but we've got a dark green Etsy competition. So if I were gonna hit bride sweatshirts, I would definitely wanna hit bride and groom sweatshirts also. Do keep in mind that when you're using E-Rank, you see there, there in that orange bar, they are not checking for trademarks for us, they are just checking to see what's popular. 
Before we hit the road and start designing, we wanna make sure that we look at USPTO.gov. This is where you could go check all of your trademarks. Now, I don't have a great tutorial on this at this time, but Cassie Johnson does, and I'll leave that video linked down below if you need to give yourself a refresher on that. I do have an outdated tutorial, it has changed. The whole system has changed since I put my tutorial together and Cassie just put one together recently. Now, especially in the wedding niche, first of all, the wedding niche is a fantastic niche to be involved in because it is a huge money maker. But that also means it is very saturated. But that sounds scary because we can get into saturated places, but we don't want to just put out a white bride sweatshirt and a black groom sweatshirt because everybody already has that design. Everybody. And we're not going to stand out. So while that type of design could make way more money than the designs that we're gonna come up with today, overall, they could generate a lot more income unless you have an amazing sales velocity and you're already in the wedding niche selling lots of it, you're probably never gonna see the light of day with a design that broad and that generic and that looks so much like everybody else's. This is the listing I was referencing in the thumbnail. It's got 315 sales and it's only been listed for three months, so about 90 days. And that is wonderful for this shop, but this shop is Mod Party. So they're able to put out a very broad general listing like this and do well with it right away because they have so many sales and they've got an a crazy sales velocity. They're also a niche store. Now I have a general store and I personally think that's the way to go. But obviously they're killing it over here. They have a niche store, it's all wedding. And that means now that their search engine optimization words, their SEO, their title and their tags are all optimized for wedding you know, phrases and tags, they're, they're gonna rank very highly with that and be very easily found because they have put so many listings in the system and the algorithm the algorithm's gonna kind of see them as a, an expert in this area. Let's quickly take a look for the words bride and the word groom and get a feel on USPTO on what's allowed and what's not allowed. I'm on USPTO.gov here. I go to trademarks and then trademark search system. And then I can go ahead and type bride and I'm gonna click expert. Now I've got all of these search results popping up. So some interesting ones I did find and that you'll wanna stay away from, and this is by no means an exhaustive list. I just wanted to share with you what I found so far. This one is live, it's still pending, which means they haven't been cleared and it's not registered yet. But in my bride era, bride vibes is registered. So it's definitely off, off limits there. Beach and bride, naughty bride, spelled like nautical, which I think that one's so cute, but it's registered. It's absolutely trademarked, you don't wanna use that. Bride's army, bride's last ride, Bridezilla, you do not want to put that in your shirt. You don't want to put any of these in your SEO either, your title, your tags. Groom gang and bride shirt. So let's talk about bride shirt for a second. Now, usually common words like the word bride aren't usually accepted or approved. So I don't know if bride shirt is going to be approved right now. It's pending, so they haven't actually approved it. But I would not use this I would not use the word bride shirt in my SEO or in my title or in my tags. I wouldn't put that together, bride shirt. As far as I understand it, we're still okay to use the word bride. We wouldn't want to put bride shirt. And hopefully they won't hopefully they won't approve this one. I well, I guess we'll see. Crazier things have happened. And just as a quick disclaimer, I am no expert on this. I can't give legal advice. I'm just sharing with you my best understanding with it and what I'm comfortable with. Our research should start with heading over to Etsy. I'm gonna put bride and groom sweatshirts in the search bar. I'm going to filter by star seller because best seller's not an option there, but then I can go up into the search bar. I can replace the word star with the word best. And now I'll be able to look at all the best sellers in this niche, they'll be coming to the front for me. I'm gonna kind of ignore the ones with ads on them, but I wanna kind of just take a look at all of the organic bestsellers. I'm going to notice a lot of color schemes here and a lot of words that I wanna keep in mind. I don't want mine to look similar, but I wanna pull in these elements. We're gonna see a lot of white bride and black groom type designs. 
We're gonna see some sand. We're gonna see some brown and white. I saw that as well. We're gonna see Mr. and Mrs. We're gonna see wifey and hubby. The last time I looked, I thought, I'm pretty sure wifey was trademarked. So you don't wanna go putting that on a shirt unless you're double checking that. We're gonna see a couple that are, well, a bunch that are personalized with the name, you know, the, the new last name with the Mr. and Mrs. and the new last name across it. There's a lot of these Roman numeral ones where you've got the Roman numeral and take note of all of these sleeve prints that are popping up. There are a ton of sleeve print designs with these. And just to be clear, I, I'm not suggesting that you not try the white bride and the black groom and super simple. You could totally do that and you're not really copying anybody. It's just one word on a shirt across that, you know, across the, the sweatshirt. But that should be like 1% of your subs. Like not many of your designs should be focused on that look because that's not gonna stand out. It'll take two seconds to list that. Now, if it's a more ornate you know, design, you, you don't wanna copy other people. But a word just across a shirt, that would be okay. I'm making it look like I did this research super duper fast, but I'm kinda of condensing it real fast for us right here. Just know that I spent some time here. I did find some cross niching with Disney that was getting bestsellers on it. You do not wanna do things like that. That is a good way to make some money and then get your shop shut down and maybe get your shop shut down before you ever even make the money and maybe get sued even. So you, you definitely wanna stay away from that. You can build a very successful business without infringing on things like Disney. I am going to show you four ways that I generated ideas and I mean a plethora of ideas, plenty of ideas, endless ideas. And there's lots of other ways to generate ideas, but I'm gonna show you quickly four ways that I did it for the designs that I'm gonna show you today. The first way we're gonna generate ideas is to head over to Chat, chat GPT, and you could do this with any topic. I'm going to ask it, can you help me think of activities that couples like to do together? Because we are going to cross niche bride and groom, and so I'm looking for other things cooking or baking, outdoor, movie and TV shows, traveling, fitness activities, game nights, arts and crafts, volunteering. Um, and then we could kind of look through and just see which ones of these we like. Outdoor activities, bike rides, picnics, camping, hikes. I think there's some really good ideas there. Movies and TV shows, traveling lends itself to quite a bit of different sub niches within that fitness, running, yoga classes, uh, that could lend itself to a bunch, game nights. All right, we can actually ask it to give us more ideas and we can keep asking it to do that. I'll just do it twice here to see what else we can get. Can you think of some more? And ChatGPT tells us a couple new good ones. I saw there at the top, Let's go back up and take a look. Wine or beer tasting. I think a wine and beer theme would be great. A wine element for the girl and a beer element for the guy. Photography, stargazing, attending live events, couples retreat, do-it-yourself home projects, book club, cooking classes, spontaneous adventures. I like the adventure theme. Second, you could always just go to Google and Google activities couples like to do together. You'll get lots of lists. And third, you can go over to E-Rank and you can actually check some of those activities out and see which of those have high search volumes and lower competition because then you're finding that the bride and groom has, has that and then you're finding that a sub niche, like let's say adventure shirts, has high search volumes and lower competition, then that might be a spot that you want, really want to cross niche even more so. And fourth, I did put a calendar together and for the purpose of time, I used my calendar resource quite a bit when I was coming up with ideas for today. If you are interested in that calendar, I did put every, everything in that calendar was backed by research. So I knew that I had done solid research with each of the things that I had jotted on there. It either came from E-Rank or it came from somewhere else. I will link that calendar down below if you are looking for a way to effectively use your time and maybe get a little further. 
The calendar not only gives you ideas for cross-niching, but it gives you a layout for every month, what you should be listing, when you should start listing it, and when you should be done listing it by. Now it's time to get creative and to hit the designing process. The first two directions we're gonna take were very specifically chosen, and I'll reveal why I cho the, chose these two directions to go in in just a minute. We are gonna jump on Kittle and we are going to design that first design and it is going to be geared for the bride and the groom that like to do snow sports together. So maybe they like to snowboard or ski, but it's gonna be someone who likes to be in the snow. On Kittle, I'm going to go to new project over here on the left and then I'm gonna to go to POD presets and I can actually just choose Printify here t-shirts. And that way it's gonna have all the right settings for me to create a shirt that's going to upload nicely to Printify. I'm gonna go down here to my uploads and I already grabbed these goggles from Creative Fabrica. I'll have a link to Creative Fabrica down in the description below. But that's a great website to get lots of great images. I'm going to use these goggles and we are going to put some shaped text in these goggles. I'm just resizing them a bit so that they take up the whole top of the artboard space here. And one of the reasons I absolutely adore Kittle is for this very feature, the shaped text. I went over to that third icon with the little T and the T for my text and I hit add headline. And whoops, I just moved my goggles there for a second. Didn't mean to do that. And I'm going to just maneuver my box over here. I'm resizing it so it fits inside the goggles. And <clears throat> I'm going to now write the word ride. Let's go over and pick a fun font. There are tons of fonts to choose from. You'll wind up getting familiar with your favorite fonts and you'll, they'll be go-tos for you, especially if you start selling items with those fonts in them and then you'll know that you should use them more. This is one of my favorite ones to go back to. So we've got ride. I'm resizing it so it just kind of fits. I keep accidentally grabbing my goggles. And we're going to shape the bride to fit. So I need to get rid of this layer section. I'm just Xing out of that. And then I've got transformations popping up. I'm gonna click distort, which is gonna give me all these little dots. I'm gonna pull this little dot to the top and it's gonna bend the whole word upward. Now I'm gonna take the bottom up, but notice this is a problem. This is like a lever and I can get the BR down, but that sends the DE up. And if I get the DE down, the BR goes up. So this is not going to work. I have a hack for that. I'm going to just put BRI, about half the word. I'm gonna resize it so that it takes up about half the goggles. I still have some of my transformation in there, which is why the R looks funny, but that's okay. I'm gonna click edit transformation, that green box that was at the top. And now I'm going to just take my dots and play around with them. I'm gonna to go to the, the middle dot. I like to start with the middle dot and pull it down to where I want it. See how I could stretch it down into the area I want. Then I can use like this teeter-totter one to kind of get it to fit just right. So when I pull up there, it goes down on the other side. You really get a feel for it once you start playing, playing with it. I can move this around a bit. I'm really just trying to get it to fit inside the goggles. I'm clicking away to kind of see where it is, but I kind of want to move it around a little bit more. So let's take a look. I'm going to pull the edge up here with the eye. I just want the bottom to fit. Oh yeah, there we go. I'm liking that. What do you guys think? There we go. I'll pull this down just a little bit. Pull the, the edge in here so the B is inside the goggles and I'm liking that. So now we're gonna add another text box and this time we're gonna do the DE. We'll go back and, and pick our sunny drop font. We'll resize just so it fits the whole goggle here. Then we'll go down to transformations and pick distort again. I'm gonna pull this middle one down and kind of get things kind of where I want them. And then I could pull the levers and just the edges, the corners, and kind of get them tucked up into the right spots. And this is really easy to use. <clears throat> when you start moving the dots around, you'll get a feel for it pretty fast. I'm going to remove background and download it as a PNG. That way I don't have a white background on it. I'm going to copy, well, I'm gonna select all my elements. This is my little cheat code here. I found it at the left at the bottom. 
and this helps me out all the time. So now I know what I need to press so that I can select all of my elements here, or I could just drag a box across all of them and select them all. The reason, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to create a new project and I'm going to drop them all in there. So I don't have to start from the gecko here with Groom. So I'm going to go back to my Printify here and pick my t-shirt for my Printify uh, settings, which is going to be 4200 by 4800. And it's going to open a new project for me. But this time I'm going to go ahead and put Groom. So I am just re, you know, editing the transformation and I'm going to go in there and now spell the word groom out, but it's less work this time because everything's kind of already shaped. So I could just do a little bit of moving around to get the word groom to fit the way I want it to. And if you're looking for those shortcuts I had up just a bit ago, they're in the bottom left corner is where I got to those. How to copy all the text and how to paste it. I've got it almost the way I've want it. Now with Groom, we're going to be putting this on a black sweatshirt. So I am going to need to change all of the font and I'm gonna to need to change the goggles to white. And as soon as I have this looking just the way I want it, I'll show you how to do that. I've selected the goggles. And because we pulled it from an outside source, I need to vectorize it, which I just tapped over here on the settings at the right. Now it's vectorized and I can change the color. And I'm going to make sure that my goggles are selected. That's up here, object color is what we want, and I'm going to turn them white. You're not going to be able to see them because my background's white also. Now I'm going to select the text. I'm going to go to text color. I'm going to select white. And now the OM, I'm going to select it, text color up here at the top, and I'm going to make that white. Uh, it looks like it disappeared because the background's also white. I could change the background for you so you could see it, uh, but you, there's, there's no real reason that we need to. I can also just go and download the image like, like it is. I'll go ahead and do it so we can see what we're working with. But I'm going to go over here, I'm going to remove background. So the black's going to disappear anyways, and I'll just have groom and white with the goggles and white this time. And we're going to be ready to go put it on our mock-up and list it in our shop. The shape text is really cool with Kittle. I will leave Kittle linked down in the description below. They have extended us a special offer. If you use the promo code Shauna, you'll get 50% off a monthly pro plan. So again, I'll leave that linked down in the description below. If you do sign up, make sure you use that so you get 50% off. Uh, one of my favorite features is the shape text. I do use that feature a lot. So let's get this mocked up and see what it looks like. So here we are with our bride and groom sweatshirts. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to design each of these with you, but I'll show you some other ideas and share some other ideas, ideas with you. The second direction we could take with this is another interest or kind of thing that people can do together or sport, I guess, that people could do together, and that is pickleball. So I have a design here where I did bride in green and groom in green. I still have them on the white and the black. Also, this I think sand would be a really good way to go with this too since we saw that a lot in the search results. And that's a little pickleball that I use. Now, I used a heart in the bride shirt. I try not to use hearts on the men version of anything because I think that it's a hard pitch for the female to convince the guy to wear something with a heart on it. But a lot of females like to wear something with a heart on it. So that this was my stab at the pickleball niche crossing with the bride and groom niche. I wanna remind you that I was going with a five-star design strategy here. So. I went to Etsy, saw a lot of pickleballs. Now, if I start getting some traction on this, or maybe I just decide I want to do a couple pickleball ones while I'm working in my, working in this bride groom niche, I would also add paddle boards to this because I noticed that was an, an element, like the boards that they use when they're playing pickleball. That was an element that was used in a lot of the best sellers. When I worked on that one with the goggles, I went over and I looked at ski shirts and I looked at uh, like snowboarding shirts and I was looking to see what kinds of elements were 
popular on those shirts, and that's how I got the idea. At first, I thought I would put, put the shaped text inside of a ski, and then when I started doing the research, I saw goggles popping up a lot, so I used the shaped text inside the goggles. Before you go and design, you should not go onto Creative Fabrica and just go, oh, I'll just pick this and I'll just pick that. You don't want to do that. You want to go into Etsy and you want to see what the best sellers are using in the different niches. If you're cross-niching, you're mixing two niches like we're doing here, look at both of those niches. It'll give you ideas of what people are liking that are in those niches. I also want to say I just kept this really simple by just putting a design on the front because I'm going to be throwing out quite a few ideas at you. And for the sake of time, I just kept it really simple with that, that front design. But we saw in the search results the majority of best sellers had sleeve print. And the sleeve print does not go here, by the way. It goes here because on the outside of the arm. So there are mock-ups that show both where, you know, there's like an arm on the... I can't do it right here. Where there's, there's an arm like across the shirt, but it's showing like the inner part of the arm. You don't want to buy a mock-up like that. You want to buy a mock-up where, you know, you're seeing the outside of the hand or they're showing the outside so that your customer knows what they're getting and they understand where that's going to be printed. We could easily do that with these designs. With the pickleball sweatshirt, we could add a little pickleball and the initial on the other shirts, it was usually a heart in the initial, or we could do a green heart in the initial. On the snowboard ones, maybe we could do a snowflake and in the initial or the date, you know, something that makes it special or something that personalize it, personalizes it. But most of the sweatshirts that we looked at in search results when we first got going with the bride and the groom, most of those sweatshirts on the sleeve either had the initial with a heart or had the date. They had that Roman numeral, those Roman numerals on the arm. I very purposely chose these two niches to start with, and that's because while I was doing research for that, you know, that general niche calendar, that resource I was mentioning at the beginning of the video, and again, I'll leave it linked down below. When I go back and I look at all of the sub niches and way ideas I give for cross niching toward the back of the resource, we could go back to sports and I do mention these sports back there. And I discovered that pickleball is the fastest growing sport in the US in the last three years. And that's followed by alpine touring and winter fat biking, which are done in the snow. So the snowboarding, you know, like the goggles one could go for someone who likes skiing or snowboarding, which is more well known. But then we've also got these two winter snow sports that are growing in popularity. So I figured that would be a pretty good stab. And while doing that five star strategy of making sure I'm basing a lot of my decisions on research, and I'm researching all of those pickleball shirts, I noticed that there were a lot of bestsellers that made like a pun or a funny joke with the word dink, which I guess is like something that happens during pickleball. I imagine it's the sound that the, word, that the ball makes, but maybe it's got a bigger meaning than that. There was lots of puns with the word dink. So I went and I looked up wedding phrases, wedding puns, and I was looking for a word that's a phrase that's associated with weddings where I could pull out a word that rhymes with dink and put the word dink in, which is what inspired this next set that I did for pickleballs. So a similar design to the first one, still green. I lost the heart on bride and now underneath it says eat, dink, and get married. Funny does sell. And when I was doing research, I came up across the word funny bride and groom many, many times. And so I know people are looking for funny things. And this applies to many niches. So now we've got a funny little joke for the pickleball couples that might want that bride and groom set. Now, I did not check that on USPTO, so do be sure whatever phrases you decide and whatever research you're doing, make sure that those phrases are not trademarked. Make sure that you're safe to use them. So our third way that we could go with this, and I'm just gonna lump it all together, sports, we kind of already mentioned two of them, but you could do football, golf, tennis. So our third way is to do this with just about any sport you could cross niche this with. You would just wanna to go to Etsy and you would want to look up those, those shirts first, the types of shirts that are, that are selling well in that, in that niche. Another really good one for couples 
is motorcycles. A lot of couples like to motorcycle, like go on adventures on their motorcycle together. I think that would be a great direction or spin to put on this. Again, you would need to go and research couples motorcycle shirts. Or even you could put gifts and see the different kinds of things that are popping up. Uh, another one, wine and beer. And I think that I covered that in the beginning where I came across that. Oh, that might have been ChatGPT that we came across that one. So maybe a wine glass for the, for the letter I and bride and maybe two little beer mugs for the O's and groom. Number six, you could cross niche bride and groom with people that like to run. So that could be people that are doing trail running, they're doing marathons, they're doing 5Ks. A lot of couples do this together, families do this together. And if that's their jam, then the bride and groom shirt that have that element on it could be kind of special for them. Maybe get one of those, you know, maybe an empty sneaker and shape the text to the sneaker for them. Or maybe you have just a little element on there that, you know, goes along with the idea of running. And I thought of this phrase, blazing a new trail together. Again, check, check USB2 if you decide to use any of the ideas I'm throwing out there. Um, I do suggest instead of using the ideas I'm throwing out there, this video is meant to help you do this process for yourself because that's where the money is. That's how you're going to make money. If you follow all the ideas that a video says, a certain percentage of people are going to do that. You're, you know, it won't be as original as if you could just start doing this process and implementing it for yourself. But blazing a new trail together, which goes into my next niche, which is hiking. You could also use that phrase there. The eighth niche that I think would be a really good mix up with this would be camping. And the ninth niche would be board games. My brother and my sister-in-law love to do board games together and, and have ever since they were dating. You could even do something that looked like, you know, I, things that came to my mind were like Scrabble letters or look, you don't want to put Scrabble or anything like that. That's a, you know, it's a brand. You can't infringe on that. But if it looks kind of like Scrabble letters and it spells out bride, you know, like the little tray that holds the letters, or it looks like the, the a crossword puzzle or a board where you're playing the Scrabble and you're trying to like put words together. You got a bride going down and then other words that are related to marriage or love being connected. Kind of like the idea that I'll put here to the side. Oh, and then groom going down the other shirt. Same thing. Some other words that are connected to the idea of marriage and to love. The 10th cross niche idea might be mountain climbing or even just mountains in general, like those adventure shirts that have like a mountain range on them, very popular aesthetic to a shirt. And you could even have something like, you know, bride and groom on each of those and underneath scaling two new heights together. Number 11 could be putting a Christian spin on this. Uh, I recently read that 65% roughly of Americans are Christian. So perhaps, you know, you have the word bride and you have the word groom done really in that classic, just clean style that was so popular. And you have something on the sleeve that is personalizing it. Maybe their initials with a little heart and a cross maybe next to it. And then you have, you see how I'm trying to pull in as many elements as I can from bestsellers. And then perhaps you go look at Bible verse shirts, which there are some rules with using Bible verses, and I'll leave a link down below to something I was reading this morning about it, as far as those being, you know, safe to use. But maybe you reference a Bible verse that is about love or about marriage. And you don't have to write the entire verse out. If you go take a look at Bible verse shirts, you'll find that most of the Best sellers, the most popular ones, just have something like 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5. And then they could go either, you know, they might already know that verse or they can go look it up. This one is love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. That is a very popular one and is a really good one for a wedding. According to this source, uh, the ancient versions of religious texts are almost certainly in the public domain and freely usable. However, any quote you're likely to come across in the print-on-demand context is going to be from a modern translation. 
Although modern translations are based on ancient versions, it does not mean they are also in the public domain. So I think I might avoid actually writing verses out. And I wanna say number 12 is maybe putting a political spin on it, especially this year being an election year. Now, honestly, this list could go on and on. Just about any interest or activity a couple could enjoy doing together could be here. Pretty endless. But we had some pretty intentional cross niche ideas here so far. And it's important to remember to always go back and do your research in that niche. You're not just willy nilly going to Creative Fabrica and saying, oh, I'll just cross niche with pickles and I'm gonna go get pickles from Creative Fabrica. So you wanna make sure that you're cross niching and doing research in that niche, in both niches that you're, that you're working in. I'm gonna show you just a couple more ideas that are completely different directions you can take. But before I do, if you are finding value from this video and you feel like your designs might improve after watching this, I'd so appreciate you taking a second to go down and like the boot button. This is a series that I am adding to every month, how to add value to the market. And I'm picking a different niche each time. If you have an idea for a niche you'd like me to do this with, go down into the comments, let me know. Also make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, that way you will know when a video is dropping and you don't miss the next one that comes out. So we can go a whole other direction here based on just bestsellers we're noticing in other niches. So we're not necessarily cross niching here. Let me show you what I mean. So I came across this shirt here, it says faith, and then it's got words inside the word faith, and they all, you know, they're Bible verses. Well, I think they're all Bible verses with this one. Let's take that back over to bride and groom. Why not do the word bride and groom, really large letters like they have here with faith, and put words associated with marriage, with love, inside the words bride and groom. Maybe, you know, passion, commitment, loyal, words that would be meaningful with marriage. Another way to apply research that you're seeing to what you're working on. We know this is working really well for this niche, for the Christian for the Christian niche here. So it would be a good stab for us to take. And I didn't see any bride and groom shirts that were looking like this. Here's another one. I looked up couples shirts uh, going totally different you know, avenue here. Um, they have had this shirt for three months out and it sold 71 times. It had a bestseller on it. I'm a slut for my girlfriend, which is just supposed to mean they like their girlfriend a lot. Um, and then you could do maybe I'm a slut for my bride. I'm a slut for my husband. I think that's a little tacky, but you know what? That's where the research brought me when I was looking. My girlfriend is hotter than you. I also think things like this are whatever. I would never wear something like this, but it's a bestseller. My bride is hotter than you. My groom is hotter than you. If lost, return to my groom. I, maybe the other one could say, if lost, return to my bride. So maybe with this one, the best way to go would be, if lost, return to my bride. And then hers could say, I'm the bride. Here we've got a funny one under new management, speak to my wife. You could then make a, a couples one now that goes with your with your set under new management, speak to my husband, or you could swap it out and it could say bride and groom, although wife and husband goes along with the same, the same idea if they've just gotten married. So it could also be under new management, speak to my groom, under new management, speak to my bride, or it could be under new management, speak to my bride, I'm, you know, something funny about her being the management. Could work something out with that. King and queen shirts do really well, so maybe something like this, and you put a B for bride and a G for groom. Maybe I would turn this into his bride, her groom, and then on the sleeve, uh, the crown element might be a good, a good one to add here. Uh, funny cells, and so here we've got my wife is psychotic, with hot being the, the word that pops out, my wife is hot. So maybe a play on that with couple shirts, my groom is psychotic, my bride is psychotic. So in a nutshell, you can take the niche you're working in and cross niche it like we did with the bride and groom. And you can also take the niche you're working in and draw inspiration from other niches. I gave a bunch of examples of that just now. We went into other niches and we just found a way to bride and groom them up. One way to set listings like this up is to go to Printify, go to the catalog, 
then go to women's clothing or men's clothing, and we'll go to sweatshirts. They're unisex, so you can find them in either section. I like to use the Gildan 18,000, so we're gonna use this one here. And when we click in to start designing, it'll take us to Printify's choice of provider here. Now I will point out we only have front and back print. You could see that at the bottom. I'm gonna go in and select black, and I'm going to select white as my two color variants. And I just drag and drop the designs in, and I'm getting the groom one set up nicely on the black here. And I make a specific design for the black by pressing this this little bar here that I was pointing out. So this will only print on the black. And then on the white, I'm gonna delete this one. And I'm going to just drag and drop my bride design in here. And I am now editing what is going to go on the white, but I already made it so that the groom one would go on the black. So now my bride design will print only on the white and my groom design will print only on the black. And all my SKUs will already be set up. As you can see here, I can go back and forth. And here I've got, I'm just double checking. Bride is gonna look like that on the white and groom is gonna look like that on the black. I can save this draft or publish it to my Etsy shop. Once I publish it to my Etsy shop, I'll just wanna go in and fix my description and my SEO, my title and my tags so that people can find my listing, and I'll wanna make sure I do research on that. I'll leave a video linked on that down in the description in case you need help with it. But right here is where you would publish it. Now, if you wanted to do sleeve print, you want to and go and pick a print provider, I use SwiftPod, that allows you to do sleeve print. And now, down here, you'll see I also have the option for sleeve print on the left or on the right. If you think that all of the clever ideas have all been thought up. You're wrong. And maybe Dr. Seuss said it best. Oh, the thinks you can think. You really do have so many thinks that you can think. I dare you to think as many things as you can think. And if you need some more help with this, I'll link a video that I think you'll like next. But of course, don't click on that until after this tip from Tucker. Tucker, take it away. Hey.